on cotton again. We're gonna make another one of these old dumb videos and uh, maybe somebody will learn something. Hello, little girl. This is my little pit bull, little girl. And uh, her name's actually Raven. She's a pit bull tag. Best little old dog anybody could ask for. But now, let's get back to the subject. For all you sportsmen out there, the people who have side by size ATVs, they run y'all run boots and all that stuff. I know a lot of people they they put that non ethanol fuel in their boots and that's that's what you're supposed to put in them. And uh, you know, I grandpa cotton kinda skimped this year and uh I'm doing a lot of fishing, going fishing two you know, two or three times a week. And I thought to myself, I said, Well, why buy that three dollar gallon gas when I can get this two twenty five gallon of gas? Cause it's gonna run right on through the motor anyhow. Well, I made a big mistake. And I don't want none of y'all to make the same mistake. Uh, I done some research on this gasoline, and for every sixteen ounces of gasoline, it produces a half an ounce of water. Yeah, you heard me. For one, 16 ounces of gas equals a half an ounce of water. Now y'all gonna say, now how is that possible? Well, they got water in that gas. That's called ethanol. Well, and a few other things. But they dilute the gas with water. Uh, these automobiles with fuel injection and everything like that, it won't hurt it to run the ethanol. Uh, it'll speed it right on through there and keep trucking. But when you got carburetor engines, then you got problems. And uh, that's coming off the gasoline website, you know, off the Shell website. I know it sounds crazy, don't it? But you can do your own experiment. You can take a 16 ounce Coca Cola bottle and put you, you know, fill it about, you know, about two, three inches from the top and set it on your bench in your shed. And you can put a fan just blowing on that bottle. So all you got to do, don't matter how hot it is, how cold it is, you can put a fan blowing on that bottle overnight. And when you come out in the morning, you ain't going to believe it. You're going to have about yay much of gas, I mean uh, water, in the bottom of that gas in that bottle. Now I made that mistake this year with my boot. August we was catching a lot of fish. September we was catching a lot of fish. Well, didn't go as much in September. So I let my boot sit out here in the shed out here with this plastic piece of crap gas tank in it. This Atwell gas tank that the, that the uh, EPA said was the best gas tank. What it amounted to is Atwell paid some bunch of politicians to go up there and change the freaking laws and say this is what you gotta have where they can set it. That, that's, you know, that, that's what it's all about, politics. Well, this tank here, this is a metal gas tank. We used to have them back in the day, all the way up until the early, I mean, about 1990, 91. Now they call them Benny's or Antique Gas Tanks. Well, I guess I'm Benny's and Antique too. But these metal gas tanks right here, we never had any problems out of them. They might rust out in the salt water out there a little bit, but everybody's boat had these tanks in them. Everybody had an outboard motor. Wasn't no such thing as an inboard gas tank unless you had a yacht. We'd have four or five of these lined up on each splash well in the back. But this piece of junk right here, let me tell you about this thing. Number one, that gasoline sweats and builds up condensation. I've seen this freaking gas tank swell up this big around. And I mean, that can't be good. And if you know, you can crack the lid on it, then you gotta smell gas all day in your boat back there, you know, evaporating out of the tanks. These old tanks here, you didn't have to open no lid on them, you didn't have to do nothing. You put your gas in them, closed them up, and it was it. Antique gas tank. Well, I bought this one right here the other day down there in Pensacola. I found it on Craigslist for $40. This gas tank right here sells for over $200. Now, this is eight gallons. That's a six gallon piece of junk. You can get a six gallon one online for about a hundred dollars. Anywhere between eighty and a hundred dollars, one hundred and twenty dollars. They high. People won't. I mean, they sell them for antiques, but they know everybody needs them. 
Well, that being said, I'm going to get back to my story. Y'all go get your metal tank. Quit fooling with that plastic crap right there. This tank here will last you a lifetime. But I had that tank and this boat, that plastic one. And uh, I went fishing. I filled it up. I skimped. I put the cheap stuff in. And I filled it up and uh, went fishing. I used about, I don't know, a quarter of gas. Come on, put it in the shed. Well, that's where it sit for about a month. Well, I got in that boat, me and a friend of mine. We went, we went uh, fishing, and we got up that doggone river, and that damn thing, that motor quit. I mean, it just choked down and quit. Kaput. I wound on that start and wound on it. I couldn't get that thing cranked at all. So I took the cowl off from it, and. Uh, I got a bleeder screw on the bottom of the carburetor. I said, well, let me see if it's got water in it some kind of way. So I cracked that bleeder screw out, pumped that bulb up about 20 times, and there wasn't nothing but pure water come out of that carburetor. That's right, water. And I'm like, how did water get in this gas tank? You know, how did it get in there? The boat stays in the shed. It ain't never out in the weather unless I get caught in a rainstorm or something. So... When I got home, I emptied this gas tank. I poured all the gas out of it, and I got down to about the last two gallons, and I started filling up fruit jars. And I filled, you know, I put about three or four more fruit jars full of good gas in there. And I got down to the last two jars. I had almost a quarter, a, a quart of water in that gas tank from that stupid gas. So y'all don't use that gas. Don't use it. Don't, I mean, use the high dollar stuff. Use the non ethanol gas. And I changed back to non ethanol and I ain't had any problem out of my motor. But uh, your lawnmowers, your generators, and, and uh, weed eaters, crank them puppies up and let them run till it, and, and cut the, you know, if you got a bio, cut it off and let that motor run out of gas where it drop that fluke. Because if you don't and you store it in the wintertime, it's going, that old carburetor is going to gum up and it ain't going to run. Come, come, you know, come something. Once it sets up for winter, it ain't going to run. But that's enough of all that talking to y'all about that. But y'all be sure you use good gas. And those of y'all that don't like these pieces of crap right here, them Atwells, them plastic gas tanks, and y'all young enough, and I know all you old folks know about it, but if you're young enough, and don't know about these old antique gas cans, look them up online and buy you one of them and replace that damn thing right there and you won't have no condensation build up in this thing and it'll last you a lifetime. But that's all I wanted to say. I hope everybody's having a good day and thanks to everybody looking at these old stupid videos. I appreciate it. Uh, never would have dreamed I'd have made, you know, 50,000 on them on the views on the video with them, that's incredible. And I thank all y'all and I want y'all to have a great day and Grandpa Cotton is signing off.